Hey, Fearless family. Today, I'm excited to introduce to you my friend, Londi Toe. She is real, she's authentic, she's vulnerable, she's dealt with postpartum depression and OCD. We answer questions like, does the church really help you become fearless? And what is it like to overcome postpartum depression? And what tools did she use to actually get through that? All those questions and more in this video. It's Fearless Tuesday. Londi, I think you called it something new. You called it Fearless Tea Tuesday, right? Yes. Fearless Tea with Christy on Tuesday. <laughs> well, we're missing our tea. We're missing our coffee. We're missing all the very good things. But I have my dear friend Londi with me today, and we're excited to just talk about random stuff. We're going to talk about does church, going to church, actually help you with fear and anxiety. We're going to talk a little bit about our youth and what it was like to be a teen when we were dealing with fear and anxiety. We're going to talk about some recent projects that Miss londy has got going on. And we're also going to talk about um, what is God speaking to you, Londi, about fear and anxiety? Uh, so all of those things we're going to touch and probably more because you know what happens, Londi. We get to talk mm -hmm. in and God just gets to speak in and things just get to roll in and it's just really, really good. So I'm going to jump right in with my first question. And I don't know why this has been burning on me so bad, but it's this whole idea of going to church and does going to church make you a good person? Does going to church um, help you alleviate fear and anxiety? Talk to me a little bit about your story with going to church. And does going to church actually make you a good person? And does it make you a true follower of Jesus Christ? Christy, thank you for having me. I love partnering with fearless. I love, love, love it. It changes lives every day. So thank you. Thank you for responding to the call and your obedience is so far reaching. There are women all over the world that are changing and looking at God, not just not just changing, but they're looking at God. So it's sustainable change. So thank you. And that actually rolls into the answer. So the answer to all of those questions is a big fat no. Oh, okay. <laughs> It doesn't. I would love to say all you have to do is show up on a Sunday morning to a local gathering and praise the Lord. But that unfortunately is not the case. There is a call to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. And what that means to me is to give him all of you, not just Sunday morning Londi, but all of Londi in motherhood and friendship, my business, uh, my relationships, my spouse, all of it. And that's what going to church is to be empowered by seeking God's word together, by being led by leaders that have the same desire to help people grow into who God has called them to be. Going to church is about knowing who you are and strengthening your identity in Christ. Now, what you do when you leave on a Sunday morning and you get in your car in the parking lot and you drive away. That is what it's called to be the church. We go to church to celebrate who God is and what he's done for us. But when we leave, we are to leave full of the integrity and the authority through the word of God to be that for others and to show others who God is. And if we're not showing up, with the right motive, like I wasn't for many years, we're not leaving with the right, the right empowerment. So it can be a very, very dangerous space to think as long as I go, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the answer is a big fat no, because you go to church doesn't mean that you're a follower of Jesus. Now I want to be very clear that we, we, you need to be connected to the local body. Uh, Londi and I both go to incredible churches in the area and we believe in the corporate gathering. Uh, but just because you're there and you show up doesn't mean that you're having the transformation. It doesn't mean that you're walking the walk. It doesn't mean that you're actual, a true disciple of Jesus. So talk to me a little bit about your, your youth. Um, Fearless has an entire department for teens. And uh, we want to pour into that next generation. Talk about your time as a teenager and maybe um, some experiences you had at teens camp. Yes. 
Wow. Okay. Loaded question. So <laughs> I grew up in a very, very strong local gathering, a church in a very small town that I'm from. Yes, I am from rural central Illinois. And I grew up with a pocket of believers that really shepherded and stewarded the idea of knowing who God is fully. I loved Teams Camp. I went every year from 13 until I graduated from high school. It was a place called Victory Valley Church Camp, also in the middle of central Illinois. It was hot. Oh my goodness, it was hot. But we would come and we would stay, people from all over the United States, young people, and we would stay in these big, long barns with no air conditioning. Oh, girl with just bunks and bunks and bunks and bunks and some showers and some bathrooms. And we loved it. We got to experience worship in the presence of God together. And that was foundational for me to learn to worship God and to seek his face with other believers at a young age. We always called church camp, you know, that mountaintop experience. So the idea that I get to go and to offer that same solution for all of your life prom problems, his name is Jesus, to get to offer the only solution for all of your life's problems is awesome. But here's the best thing, air conditioning. Yes, that's what I was just going to say. Because I'm old now. I can't hang like that because I'm old now. It's not in a barn and it's actually in some air conditioned. And just while we're talking about it, here is the lineup of our speakers for Teen Camp. We've got Erica Moore, Sarah Good, Londi is going to be with us. I'm going to be speaking, Katie Bynum, uh, McKaylin, who is our teens director. Guys, get your girls to teens camp. Yes. You go to fearlesswomenstl.com and then go under the uh, get started. You'll find the fearless uh, teens camp information. I mean, Londi just said it. The answer to all of your life's problems, all of your teenage girls' problems, their boyfriend problems, their 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 friendship problems, their their depression and their anxiety, the the conflicts that they're having in their life, who they're gonna marry, what is the purpose of life, their self worth issues, their lack of confidence. All of it can be found in Jesus. And we are going to give them those tools, those foundations, the hard questions that they're battling with. Who is God? And why should I believe in him? And, you know, is God stuffy and uncool? All of those questions are going to get answered. So send your girls to camp. Now, that is not what this whole broadcast is about today, but we we really just wanted you to know that Londi and I are partnering together with these amazing women, our amazing volunteer staff, all of our camp counselors are going to be pouring into your precious girls. We need you to get registered for camp. We've only got about two more weeks until registration closes. July 15th through the 17th at High Hill. Um, that's in High Hill, Missouri. It's High Hill Christian Camp. It's $230 for three days. Three days. All meals. It includes an adorable shirt that comes with it. All the content, all the programming, and scholarships are available. Yes. So do not let money get in the way. If you cannot afford that, we have scholarships available. So there's really no reason why we shouldn't get these girls signed up for Teens Camp. Yes. And one more thing about that. Parents, it is not all on you. We are here to help you steward your children in the right direction. Release yourself at least for three days. Let the experts come in clutch for you for three days. You can trust your girls with us. You can trust that we are going to show them who God is and show him how good he is. You don't have to do everything on your own. It's time that you just put them in the car and drop them off. Lord, Lord, ask them. Great. Lord, ask them, register them and leave the rest to me. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. So you moving topics now, you actually have battled with postpartum depression and OCD. And this is even after you've been to church all your life and had a mom that was praying into you and you were worshiping and learn, you battled, you had a break down. I want you to talk. Give us the nitty gritty. Just give us the what happened. How did this postpartum depression hit you in OCD? How did you find your way out of it? Well, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it at all, Chris. 
<laughs> it wasn't even just postpartum depression. I don't want y'all to think this was a little bit of baby blues. I was actually postpartum depression, psychosis with intrusive thoughts. And that's where the OCD comes from. That's what the world or the, the medical professional um, that evaluated me, that's what their diagnosis was, that I was in danger. I was in a lot of danger and my family was in danger. And I, it crept in slowly. It crept in slowly. And here's how it started. One thought you were all alone. And I believed the lie that came straight from hell that said I was all alone. Your husband can't help you. Your friends can't help you. Your doctors can't help you. You're on your own. But most importantly, God can't help you. And that just morphed into lack of sleep and lack of control. And it just blew out of, it just blew out of control. There is no other words to say it. And I found, I found myself hospitalized for five days as I really, it was my prodigal son moment. And when I say prodigal son moment, for those of you that um, are new believers or haven't yet chosen Christ, I'm inviting you today first to choose him, but to also to understand that it means to come to the end of yourself. It means to be literally sitting in your own slop in the middle of a pig pen and said, and say to yourself, say to God, I cannot do this anymore. Enough with the pretending, a lot, enough with the, uh, you know, rejecting the help that I needed, not from other people, but from the Lord. Because I think it's really easy to say, yes, I just felt like I had to do it all on my own. And it's kind of catchy, right? You're such a powerful woman. You had to do it all on your own. And you thought that you could, you know, you're just a strong woman. No, that is garbage. I was not strong. Being strong is saying, Christy, I'm hurting. I need help. Please pray for me. I Can you help me? Can you go to the grocery store for me? I don't know when I'm going to feed my kids. My husband hates my guts and I hate his guts. What am I going to do? What do we do? That is being a strong, powerful woman. And then you're connecting with another woman that says, where's your Bible? When's the last time you stood in the presence of the Lord? When's the last time you worshiped? Did you tell God that you felt this way first? What, what happened when you prayed? Those are the types of questions that I needed to hear. But because I was going to church, but I wasn't asking for help within the safety of the church, I just started to drown. Londi, you touched on a lot of really important things. And I think first and foremost, it's that it's garbage when we try to self-help our way out of things. And I think self-help will get us into the darkness, into the dark hole. Yes. Uh, and you also talked about surrounding yourself with community that is going to call you out of the hole, call you out of the pit. Um, talk about how in your postpartum depression with the OCD that you realized who your true friends were. When did when was it I needed to start surrounding, my, surrounding myself with women that were going to speak the word over me and pray over me? Was there a shift in your friendships? What did that look like? Yes, actually, my um, my friendships, my friendship ship that navigates you got really small because I had to drown out every voice that was not going to point me in the direction of spiritual and mental and emotional health and stability. So it did, it got really small. I just started to first, my husband and I had to connect on a different level than we hadn't before, which meant Londi had to get real vulnerable and not be perfect all the time. And we had to get really comfortable, Shane and I together with seeking God's face on for some wisdom on things. Um, I drowned out all voices except for a couple of people. My sister was one of them that really kept the word of God in front of my face. And she taught me, like I teach others, preach the gospel to yourself every single day. Talk about every hold single on, day. Please, I'm on a Facebook Live. This is, this is family time. Uh, hold on, please. So um, talk about the spiritual 
side of things and the physical side of things that we love the medical community. We love the medical community. We believe in them, but we also believe that it's not the only answer. So talk about a little bit, um, what, what are your thoughts on that? And how can we rely less on doctors and medication and more on the author of life, Jesus Christ? Yeah. You know, I love that you asked that question because honestly, for me, and I'm not a doctor and I'm not telling anyone to do anything with their medication, but for me, the amount of medication that I was taking was very dangerous. And it actually made my suicidal idolization rev up pretty strong. And I actually had to detox it in a safe environment. I actually had to say, with the help of my sister and my spouse overseeing that and some friends that were in California, I got to walk away from this for a, for a while and I'm only going to seek God. And if I'm off, I gave them the permission. If you see something off, call a hospital. Dial 911. But I had to make a choice because it was so dangerous. Christy, I was taking lithium, Latuda, Xanax, um, and a sleeping pill. I gained about 50 pounds, which, trust me, did not help <laughs> with the anxiety and the depression. I couldn't form sentences. I couldn't drive. My 17 year old son had to drive us places. So my motherhood was attacked at a whole nother level. Here I am feeling like I can't take care of this baby. I have to stop breastfeeding her because I can't take my medication, which broke my heart. And now my son is taking care of his mother. I would go to therapy every day. I would go to crisis therapy. It kept me stuck because I was in crisis therapy for too long hearing everybody else's trauma. There was no life. There was nobody saying, but God, because in the medical community, you're not allowed to. Sorry, I'm saying no more to it. For me, it's a no. For you, you seek the Lord for you. But for Londi Tao, I need this in the frame. I need this. Okay. I think it's really important that we understand what idol is. An idol is anything you run to before you run to God. And I know for myself that when I was in the pits of hell and had a nervous breakdown and I was on Celexa and I was on my antidepressant, I was on my rescue, Xanax, I was on all those things. And when I began to run to those first, I got to have my meds. 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 I got to have my, and it, then I realized, I mean, something was in so, so off that we were running to medication and doctors and therapy and, and essential oils and all these things. I was running to before I was running to Jesus medication in itself is not bad it can help you balance out the things that are unbalanced in your head in your brain chemistry it is not bad but when we use it to numb out when we use it to to cover pains and wounds and not go to the root and dig out the stuff that needs to be dug out with the Lord it is dangerous. So I hope you hear Londi and I's heart on this is that we're not dog and doctors. We're not dog and medication. And in fact, I believe, and if you go to a good therapist or a good doctor, they're going to tell you this too, that when you use medication and antidepressant, it should always be in collaboration with a therapist because there's a reason why you need those meds. You got there somehow, somehow, some way. So you should be working through talk therapy and taking your medicine at the same time and hopefully seeking recovery and healing. What do you, what do you have to say about that, Wandy? Yes. I mean, I, I had, I knew that God could heal me. I knew because of my faith that the Lord could supernaturally heal me of any diagnosis that was on paper. And I remember coming home and ripping every diagnosis up, bipolar disorder, rip postpartum depression and psychosis, rip, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, rip. God's word is faithful, it's true, and it's sharper than any man's pen to a piece of paper. Woo. And I know that God healed me. I know that he healed me, and I know he can heal anybody watching this. And we're here to promote the only healing that will save your soul. 
and his name is Jesus. That's right. That's right. Well, anything more you want to talk about with postpartum or OCD, the, the, the time that you walked through and how you overcame it? You know, I think it's really important to understand that we as women, <clears throat> I could literally cry and jump for joy at the same time. I know that sounds very bipolar, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> We have got to come out of self-talk therapy that tells us that we are strong enough to do it on our own. Yes. We have got to divorce this mentality that says you can self-empower your way or manifest your way into anything that you want. It's a lie. And what you're doing is you're feeding people deception by default. By not saying no, you say yes. So I want you to hear from my mouth. I do not support women empowerment manifestos. I support the word of God. I support the living, breathing, sharper than two-edged sword, sword of the spirit, which is, is his word. I support putting on the full armor of Christ, which means having the mind of Christ, which means mental health issues are not allowed here. If it's not allowed in heaven, it ain't allowed in this body. So I really want us to be so careful about what we do by default. I'm going to breathe through it. Well, what are you breathing? The air that he gave you. Well, I'm going to speak peace to myself. What peace are you are you claiming? Because there's a peace that passes all understanding and there's a human peace that might get me through a traffic jam, but it didn't carry me through postpartum depression and psychosis. And let me tell you, I really was going to kill myself. I really was. And it was divine. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit that told my husband, you need to go home right now and you need to phone a friend. And her butt was on an airplane from LA within two hours. I mean, it was, it was God. So when I say he can heal me, he can heal you. He can hear you. He knows your pain. So why not just let acknowledge that he's there. But as long as we're like, well, I, you know what, if I just journal or if I just go to therapy or if I just take this medication, you are your own God, baby girl. You cannot be your own God and survive in this world. Yoga can't be your God. Music can't be your God. Food can't be your God. Sex can't be your God. Success cannot be your God. Your children cannot be your God. God can be your God or you will perish. I mean, sorry, real talk Tuesday. <laughs> and maybe that's what we're going to start calling it. Real talk Tuesday tea, real talk Tuesday tea. No, it's good. And and it's important. And, and this needs to be shared and it needs to be replayed and it needs to be talking about over and over. We're getting lots of comments coming in. I don't think you can see them, Londi, but um, it, it's, it's, it's resonating and it's striking a chord, which is so, so good. My question to you right now, Londi, is what is God speaking to you right now about fear? Like today in this moment? Well, I woke up 5 a.m. Normally it's like boots on the ground before the Lord. Thank you. And it was open my eyes. I am not going to the gym today. <laughs> and for me, no, I'm like, I just need to cuddle in with Shane just a little bit. Longer. <laughs> but no, I could not. It, the Lord, the Holy Spirit was arresting me. And when I say he was arresting me, you ever watch somebody wring out a towel when it's wet? I woke up feeling being like I was being wrung out. And he was showing me this big metal, rusty old toolbox. Not like a nice one. But one of the old ones, it's like triangular shapes, yep. like what my grandpa used to have. If you ever grew up on farms or around farms like I did, those things are staples in people's homes, in their garages. And it was like this tool, and there was like this old Bible that was stuck in it. Probably looked a lot like this one. I mean, just worn well. And God said, I will not be a tool for you to cope and to deal with hard circumstances as you rustle through the other tools. Oh, let me try this one today. 
God's word. Let me try this one today, self-empowerment. Let me try this one today. Um, just hiding out. I can't adult today. All these cute little memes that we have on t-shirts that, you know, they look make cute fashion. But the enemy loves when we celebrate mediocrity, doesn't he? So the Lord really showed me that I will be your only source of fuel. Now, here's the thing. People say you should eat for fuel. I say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No, the Lord rebuke you because <laughs> I love food. I love food. I love to talk about food. I love to eat food. I love to go out to dinner. I love to make food with friends. I love food. And the Lord was showing me, I will be your food, your source, not a tool, not like the fork, but the actual food on the plate. And if you will consume me, your life will be blessed. And I just like the old school, like maybe the first scripture you learn in Sunday school, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish. What do we need food for? So that we don't die. We read, we read it too fast, should not perish, but have everlasting life through him. We eat so that we don't die and we need to eat the word of God and consume his word, which says, I am the bread of life. Let me go back. The whole purpose of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is to reveal who Jesus is. No Old Testament, no New Testament. It's all Jesus. Genesis, Jesus, Exodus, Jesus, Numbers, Jesus, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, all the way through. So if it's all to be consumed as food, what happens when we're not consuming it and we eat other foods? We perish. Hmm. So it was like this old toolbox. And I made a post about it this morning, not in full detail of what God showed me, but it was just like me pushing off that toolbox off the table and just having the word of God on a plate, consume it for the rest of your life. If you don't eat this, you will die. And that's what he was showing to me. Like if our job as to be agents of reconciliation and ministers of reconciliation and to preach the gospel, which every single one of the people that are watching this, you are called to preach the gospel. If we don't eat it, we can't preach it. We can't serve it if we don't have it, right? can't invite Christy over to dinner and be like, we're going to eat and there's no food here. I can't say I'm going to help you find the way out of your circumstance with no food. It's really, really good. I will be your source, your source of fuel. And that means Jesus, yes. not our self-help, not our self-efforts, not our friends, not our husbands, Ooh. not our medication, not any of those things. Who is your source of fuel right now what is your source of fuel right now seriously answer the question you can if you're if you're bold answer it in comments but if you're not it, that's okay too answer it within your heart put it down on a piece of paper who is your source of fuel right now who it that matters is so important it matters if you want to overcome fear and anxiety and depression and stress and the crazy chaos of our world the fuel, the number one fuel that 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 is your bread of life that is that is charging you up every single day has to be Jesus. It has to be. It just has to be. Yeah. That's good, Lonnie. That was really, really good. So um you talk about a little bit uh about preaching the gospel to yourself. For my sisters that are watching right now, I just spit on the screen and now I can't like see on the camera. I'm just gonna have to take care of that real quick, girls. I don't know if that's OCD or what, but I, know. I couldn't handle it. All right, but um, preaching the gospel to yourself. Let's just take it back. Take it back to the girls that are watching right now that haven't been to church, that they don't understand what that means and they don't even know how to begin with that. And then keep in mind, there are women watching that do know how to preach the gospel to themselves. So what would be the answer to you need to preach the gospel to yourself if you want to overcome fear and anxiety? Walk me through that like I'm in kindergarten. Okay, here we go. I'm really ready. Simple. The scripture that I said a couple minutes ago, I'm going to say it again. 
It's John 3, 16. For God so loved you, Christy, that he gave his son, Jesus, that if you would choose him, if you would believe him, that he was willing to see you so valuable, so worthy, that he was willing to give up his son. I'm a mother. It's not happening in my human strength. You're not getting Isaiah, Brianna, Ryder River, or Rosie. I wish somebody would try. You're not going out alive. So the thought that God found me, Londi Tao, so worthy that he would give you, give his son for me, that if I would choose him and believe on him, that I would have everlasting life, not just when I die and go to heaven, but the power to live a full, beautiful life right now today. Right now today, that's what it means. That's it. If you choose Jesus, he will be your rescuer. He will be your safety. He will be your deliverer. He will be, he will set you free from your bondage. He will, if you believe. And not only that, he doesn't require that you do it alone. I'm here for you. Christy's here for you. If you are in another state, we will find people to co-labor, lock arms, and walk this journey with you. That's what it means. Just say yes to God first. I'm sorry, but nothing else can come until we do that. Once you choose him and you say yes to him, then we start looking at what it means to live a full life, honorable and seeking God and living a faithful life for him and him setting you free, meaning keeping you from harm. Keeping you from harm. When I say word rescue, keep you from harm, deliver, pull you out of harm. If I'm running into traffic and you snatch me back, Christy just delivered me from being roadkill all over the road. That's a deliverer. So let's not get caught up on terms. Your heart will be called by the Holy Spirit to say yes to God. I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know how, but I know that his word is true. And when you hear it, believe it. That's your first door that you're going to walk through towards freedom. Amen. Well, and did you have any closing thoughts for us as we end this Tuesday tea, real talk Tuesday? I do. Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off. All of this empowerment crap. Knock it off. You can do nothing without God. It may sustain you for a minute, but you can do nothing. You will go nowhere. You will be rich and lonely. And you can be in a room full of people surrounded by children in the middle of Fiji and be miserable and lonely. But if you will choose Christ, you will never want for companionship ever again. And with that, my fearless friends, I think we close this Fearless Tuesday out. Knock it off, sisters, in the most loving, gentle, caring, but aggressive way possible. We need you to knock it off. Remain in him and he will remain in you. Apart from him, you can do nothing. nothing. This is preaching the gospel to yourself, friends. And we have to know the word. We have to know the truth. And the truth will set us free. Knowing God, knowing Jesus, walking with like-minded women. That's why we do these Fearless uh, Tuesdays. That's why we have the events. That's why we have the camps. Because we want to equip you. We want to empower you to walk in the freedom that Jesus died for you. And for Londi and for me. And that's the beauty of all of this. Londi, thank you so much for sharing your heart, your vulnerability. Uh, I think that it resonated deeply with the fearless community. Um, if this message helped you, share it. Let it let it go out. It will also be repurposed on YouTube. So we'll be able to share it on YouTube as well. So thank you, fearless friends, for watching and commenting. We love you so much. And we'll see you again next Tuesday at noon for our Real Talk Tuesdays. Uh, Londi, thanks so much. We appreciate Absolutely. you. Bye friends. Bye bye. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. We can't wait to bring you more fearless content.